Welcome back to Here's Next Door. Thank you for joining us for another Station Cribs. Today we're in Colorado. We're doing South Metro, station number 32. This house is pretty cool because they got a lot of in-house features that we want to take a look at. So today we're going to meet up with the lieutenant here. He's going to walk us around. His Hello, hey. are you Trent? I'm Trent. How you doing? Good. Nice to meet you. Welcome to Station 32. So uh, my name is Trent Arguello. I'm a lieutenant on Tower 32 uh, on A-Shift. So this is a very beautiful house. As I yeah. came in from the city here, I came down the hill, and this house just kind of popped right out of the right out of the skyline. Yeah. It had the mountains in the back. Yeah. You know, very and pretty it, house. It, it, it's big. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I can see how, how, how it would pop. Um, so as you come in here, uh, we have two offices. One is for our uh, medical battalion chief, Med 2. And then on this side is for uh, our paramedics and our firefighters uh, to get their work and reports done. Nice. And then we'll come down the hallway down here. Uh, uh, yeah, so we got pictures on the wall of uh, uh, working fires that we've been on. Okay. And then this is the lieutenant's office and this is the battalion chief's office right here. Okay, so and you got some pretty battalion good- Battalion Chief uh, Balker right there, Brian Balker right there. Nice to meet you, Chief. Nice to meet you. Thanks for inviting us in. For sure. Yeah, I appreciate it. Got a beautiful house here, so. So, Chief, maybe you know, how long has this house been in existence? Uh, Eric and I were just talking about, I think, 2016. Okay. It was built, so. So it's a fairly new house. Was this the same location? Yeah, same location, and there was uh, two buildings on the old lot. The fire station was one, and then there was an office building right next to us, um, just to the north of us, and we purchased that uh, older building a lot to make a bigger, newer lot and station. Right, right. I'm excited to see it. So LT is going to take me around. I'll catch up to you maybe later. That sounds great. All right. Thanks, Chief. So right here is our wall of unit citations that okay. we had on, on calls. Can you explain to us a little bit what a unit citation is? Because when we hear yeah. citations for the lay public, mm -hmm. they may think that's a ticket. <laughs> but yeah. that's not a ticket. That's a, so it, an award, basically, right? Yeah. So it's, a, it's an award for the crew uh, for going uh, above and beyond on a fire call or a medical call. Okay. Yeah, so. And are they awarded by the station chiefs or are they awarded by the community? Uh, it could be awarded by the department. The, your chief can put you in for a unit citation. Um, crew members can put you in for a unit citation. So, um, And then uh, it goes through a board and they look at it to see if it's worthy of a unit citation. And then uh, um, when they have the next uh, uh, awards banquet, then uh, uh, that's when they'll bring it out and, and get so it. So this crew. is definitely an honor to be up on this wall. Absolutely. And this yeah. is going to be a legacy for the next generations. Oh, absolutely. They're going to come in here and see all these uh, yeah. citations and try to and, add and to the history. Of, yeah. Yeah. That's cool to have. Cool. You're starting to build that uh, history in this station. Absolutely. Many times when we go to the older stations, they are, you know, they have that history, they have that feel. Mm -hmm. And the one thing that we get concerned about on Station Cribs is when you go to a new building, do you lose that or can you bring it with you? Well, we bring it with us. And the way we brought it with us from the last station, I can show you down here in this hallway, is this right here was one of the walls that we have that was part of the last station. And they cut it out, literally cut out the drywall on it, and they put it right here. So we kind of brought uh, a little bit of the station legacy with us here. So this is the old same drywall. Same drywall, old... same wall, same everything. That is a great way to do that. Yeah. So they just cut it out and they just uh, right. uh, put it and framed it right. and put it on the wall in this hallway right here. So for us old timers that you may be in that older building, you can say, hey, this is where it began yep. this is where, and this is where we're going to take it. Yep. That's cool. Yeah. That's cool to see. All right, and you have on the main level here, I was kind of doing a little bit of research. You have a kitchen, you have a crew room and things like that. Yeah. Can we go see those? Yeah, let me show you. So bringing you into our kitchen right here. Okay. I see you got crew on today. How many crew do, do you usually have in the house? So in the house, uh, we'll have eight. Okay. Minimum. Is that full time Sometimes or is that? Full time, so we work uh, 48, 96, so we're on two days. Okay. And we'll be off four days. Nice. So we just started this morning. 
and, and we'll be on Tuesday, Wednesday, and we'll get off Thursday morning. Okay. Um, so in here we have four fridges. Wow, okay. Uh, one is for each shift, and then we got one fridge for uh, condiments, we call it our employee front fridge. Okay. So it's just for mayonnaise, uh, ketchup, mustard, just stuff that everybody uses. Right, right. You know, that we all pay, uh, pay into a fund. Right. I just support. love the open feeling of this kitchen. It almost feels like a home kitchen. Yeah. Some of the stations we've gone to were very industrial. Yeah. And, and don't get me wrong, I love those stations, but yeah. this one has a different feel to it. And it feels like I'm in grandma's kitchen. It's just a bigger one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so it's really nice. Uh, gas stove, gas oven, uh, a lot of room to cook and everything. Uh, we've got a big table for everybody. Be, like I said, there's eight people here. Right. So, uh, but we have a lot of good conversations around the table and I think that's important. Okay, so yeah. on your shift, who's the best cook? Uh, I would say uh, me. Yeah, <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> All right, where uh, do we go from here? So uh, we can go out to the patio. Yeah, let's do We can do show you our barbecue. So we have a regular uh, 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 gas grill. Okay. And then we have a Traeger. So if we want to smoke some meat or something, right. we can use the, the Traeger. So it's not real big, but no, it's but you big got enough. Nice it's view. nice out here. We got a good view. Yeah. Yeah. Here you got your smoke. You can hang out smoke here. We could hang out here if we chairs. wanted to. Absolutely. That's the view yep. that I really enjoy. Yeah. You see in the mountains. Yeah, we got a view of the mountains. And those are the Rocky to Mountains? the west. Yep. Okay. Yep. Man, this so, is gorgeous. Yeah. So come on in and I'll show you uh, our TV room. And, and then we got our, our Firehouse 32. And then what you see here, what you hear here, what you say here. When you leave here, let it stay here. Exactly. Right? Yeah, don't so, bring it home. That's right. So, <laughs> uh, um, Nice motto. Yeah, so come on in. This is one of our uh, our accidents we had on the tower, so this is just kind of a memento. Right, right. Just kind of keep uh, it fresh. All right, yeah. <laughs> Tease the guys a little bit. I'm going to turn on the lights if that's all right here. Yeah. Uh, there you go. All right. There's another memento. Okay. <laughs> Uh, we have a Broncos firefighter helmet right here. Nice. Uh, we have a, a very talented metal worker. That's our captain of this station, and he made all these little uh, uh, metal worker men firefighting okay. men right here. The fact that yeah. it's kind of stadium seating, so you know during yeah. Super Bowl or weekend or whatever. That's right. Everybody can see the TV that you got. Yep. Nice and comfortable in here. Yep. Got a little foosball table back there too. Yep. We got a little foosball table. Once in a while, we'll play some foosball. Right. Have a foosball tournament. Man, these uh, guys here's are awesome. a tee. Yep. <laughs> Absolutely. Tell me a little bit about your area as we walk around. Where where are we actually located? Because I cut through Denver, I yep. thought. Yep, so right now we're just south of Denver. Okay. Um, the the border of Denver is Bellevue up here, which is just uh, uh, three or four blocks north of here. Okay. Is the border of Denver. And uh, we're in the Denver Tech Center right now. Okay. Uh, which is all mid-rises and uh, commercial for the most part. Okay. Um, our district is interesting because if we go uh, uh, east of Quebec, it's all like mid-rises and commercial. If we go west of Quebec this way, it's all residential. Okay. So, That's a good mix so, of calls So we then. get the good mix of everything. Yep. Right. So, right. But how many calls do you run at this house? Uh, at this house, we'll probably run seven to ten a day. Okay. So, so that puts you about five, six thousand a year then. Yeah. So I'm like, doing my math right. Um, <laughs> yeah, it just depends. I think uh, we actually run, uh, I want to say... Uh, three to four thousand. Okay. Yeah. I would say at this station, probably sixty residential, like going on uh, medicals, going on, and then uh, probably maybe a little bit thirty, a little bit higher, thirty to forty percent going on fire alarms, car okay. accidents on the highway. The highway keeps us busy. Okay. And stuff like that. Okay. And I see right behind our camera guy here. You have a pretty good weight room. Can we yeah. walk in there? Yeah. Come on in. So whoever the architect that built this for you yeah. knew what he was doing because having glass going into your workout room is very important nowadays. Yeah, um, and we have alarms. So when we're working out, they're on top. They'll turn, those lights will turn red. Okay. Um, like I said, we have a weight station here. Uh, we got a Stairmaster here. Uh, we got two Woodway 
treadmills, which are probably the best in the business, especially on your knees. Yeah. So um, uh, we got a stages uh, 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 stationary bike. And it's so, a unique design too, because I see you actually have a door. Does that go outside or are those just windows? Because it looks like it looks nope, it'll, uh, it'll We can open it up. Okay. Um, so if you want to do maybe some ropes or you want to do some high impact stuff yep, that goes or out. Or some mobility or some CrossFit stuff, we have all that right. uh, equipment too. Okay. Yeah, out in the bay or if we need more room, if we're going to do a crew workout or something and we need more room, we can always come in here open the garage door and then go outside for uh, okay. for the workout. So for South Metro, what kind of fitness requirements do you guys do? Do you work out as a team all the time or do you rely on the guys to kind of do their own? Uh, I think it just depends on the station. Okay. Now you said you're here for an extended period of time. You're paid staff 24 seven. Yep. Where are your bunks? Are they? Uh, our bunks are upstairs. Yep. Okay. And, I can, and I can show you those right now. Okay. Cool. Yes. Yeah, so I showed you our wall. Um, this is where we came in at, yep. and then up here we got our stairs. Okay. Uh, downstairs we have a, a little training facility and a SCBA maze okay. that we have. And I can show you after I show you our bunks. Yeah, let's do that. Sound good? Okay. Okay. This is really unique too because you have a staircase in the center of the house yep. that brings you, you know, to where you need to be. Do you yep. guys have a fire pole also? We do have a fire pole. Okay. And this is where it ends down oh, here right in behind yep. i walked right past it and this is where we can this is where we get on it okay all right um right here is when i was talking about our captain who's really uh go a good metal worker so this was to our this was the the bucket to our old tower right that he put on the wall so um he cut it in half and then just mounted it against the wall that's cool yeah, yeah that, that's a, that's an artistic feel that brings home to a firehouse absolutely and it, it yeah. gets rid of that like i was talking about earlier that industrial feel yep this is part of you guys you guys live here this absolutely is... and this is the history of the station yeah too, right? yeah it keeps yeah. that going in right love the fire pole yeah. now are you guys active do you guys use the fire pole because uh, some firehouses actually outlawed them some of them haven't it's probably well, so we have the option to use the fire pole if we want it's probably 50 50 mix on if they use the fire pole or if they go down the, down okay. the stairs. I so. like that it's secure though too, so yep. you don't have uh -huh. to worry about that. Yeah, you, and you gotta push this button for this to open yep. so you can't just open it up. Okay. Yeah. And up here and are up just here, bunks, right? We have bunks on each side. Okay. So um, uh, firefighters, paramedics, engineers have, have a bunk here, and then right next door is their bathroom. Okay. And then uh, the battalion chief is on one end, and I'm on the other end, and our rooms have an integral bathroom. So oh, okay. I can show you this. All right. Wow, so, this is really nice. Yeah, so here's our, here, here's our room right here. Okay. And then, um, and then we have our own bathroom. Right. right here. And this we is, this is your room, then? This is my room, and the battalion chief has the same room okay. just on the other side. This yeah. reminds me of what we've seen across America, too, where they're starting to have live-in programs, yeah. where they're recruiting volunteers. Oh, yeah. You, yeah. You, know, you guys are paid, yeah. so you are actually live-in. This yeah. is a college dorm, really, yeah. is what it's set up to be. Yeah. You have your own place to put your own clothing, so yeah. you can change. you got a place to sleep, yeah. place to shower. And we have three bunks here. Uh, f one for each officer, right? And then uh, we just put our bedding up top here, and then uh, share the bed, right? And then these are sleep by number. Oh, beds. So you got a little uh, bit of comfort there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, we have an elevator at the station as you walked in. Okay. And this is where it comes up. Right. So that makes this house actually ADA compliant, then too. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, in here. We have kind of a, a meeting room that we're still working on decorating over here. Okay. This is a good place to kind of come up and do some studies. So yeah, you can do some studying. We can talk about stuff. We can do some training. Right. Um, yeah, so it, it's a good area to do that. Nice big area. Yeah, it's almost like a cupola up there. That you can get yep. the sun coming on from all yep. angles. Yep. Uh-huh. Wow. I and, can just, you know, curl up in a chair, read a book. Yep. You know, just kind of relax in here. In Absolutely. Between calls. Absolutely. Decompress. Maybe even get my con ed done on time. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Bunk rooms. Now, are they all pretty much the same kind of bunk rooms for it, the crew? It, exactly the same. You got a bed, you got three lockers, uh, a desk if you want to use. Okay. And then, uh, um, like I said, the, and then the bathroom. The only difference yeah, between my 
my uh, bedroom and the battalion's bedroom is that's integrated. So gotcha. Um, and then we got more pictures of here. Of, and these uh, are all guys that have been on the job, right? That have been on the job. Yep. Right. All of them. Man, yep. This is awesome. So this is the upstairs. So and, when you're up here and uh -huh. you get an alert, yeah, you run medic here and you yep. run um, fire here. Yeah. Does the whole horn go off for everybody, or do you have it integrated where? You can only program one room. So we do have it integrated in the room. So um, let's go in this room over okay. here. Or we can go in my room. I'll okay. show you. Or we can go here. There we go. Yeah. So it's called a first in system. Okay. So if you're on the medic, you can make the alarms in here only go off if the medic gets a call right. while we're sleeping tonight. Um, or uh, the battalion or the tower or whatever. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. I think these new systems are really important for you know our safety too, because a lot of times firehouses, especially the firehouse like yours, you're busy all the time. You're yep. always getting calls. But if I have the opportunity to take a little bit longer rest yeah. in between calls, because medics just going out and it's not, you don't need the tower. Yeah. Um, that's important to keep that sleep schedule absolutely as, as much as possible. Absolutely. So. Um, like I was telling uh, one of your cohorts. Every time we get up in the middle of the night and we're in REM sleep, just think of it like your brain as a record. Mm -hmm. And you get a little scratch on it every time you get up, right? So after a, a career of 30 years of doing that, yeah. that record's really scratched. <laughs> exactly. Right? So, uh, yeah, so it's one of the, the uh, uh, things we have to help us sleep. Right. So we don't get up even though we're another rig. And I Unfortunately, think, it's getting up. I, I think that's very important for the public to understand that when the administration of your company asks for, you know, technology like that to be put in a building, yeah, um, you can articulate that very well, and the public now knows. Okay, we're going to spend yeah. a little bit of extra money to put some kind of, but it's going to really save on your careers. And there's but, a call right there. So we got a fire alarm response. Okay. Um, so we're going to actually yeah. break for now, and I'm going to try to get some behind the scenes of a fire alarm. Cool. So the HVAC system is in here and areas around the water heater, there's a lot of areas that we're concerned about just uh, uh, potential of uh, incomplete combustion and causing CO. Okay.
Don't want to find you anything and check the battery or okay. check the basin, check the upstairs. Thank you so much. We'll check so around so here real quick. Okay. For yeah. having we got in here that way? Yeah. My name is Mike. I can hear it next door. I'm a YouTube you know, guy, so I'm following the guys around today. Oh. Around. oh, okay. Would it be okay for us to put you on a film and show them doing their job? Sure. Okay. Yeah, will you send me a link later? Sure, sure. That'd be great. Yeah. All right, so uh, now we're back from the call. Uh, CO alarm, no sick parties. We got that resolved. Okay. And uh, now I'll take you downstairs and I'll show you our training props. Yeah, it's pretty cool to see how you guys operate and, you know, make the response. How you made that uh, resident feel comfortable that you know everything was safe and she's okay yeah yeah that's what we like to do you know with all the calls that we have and um all our all our customers are, are really really important to us and the cool thing that i saw with your team is you guys really didn't have to communicate what each other's job was you knew as soon as you get your off the truck you know who was doing what where who they were going yep uh, you did the 360 uh went into the house checked everything out you guys knew yep. what to do. Yep, we've been working long enough to uh, the point that we all know our duties once we get on scene. Right. So, yeah. Wow, check this out. So this, this is, is pretty cool to have in a, in a firehouse. Yep. So you probably got to go to a training center to do this. Yeah. And it looks like you're still so, kind of building stuff. You got some extra yep. things here? So we built it and then um, we can change stuff around. So we built it so we can make it. Uh, uh, change stuff around in here. Right, right. And so it's not always the same. So for uh, our viewers SCBA. don't know what this is. I've played in these quite a bit, you okay. know, going through fire school and that yep. kind of stuff. Explain to our viewers what this is. What are we looking at here? So this is an SCBA obstacle course. So what we'll do is we'll have uh, ourselves or recruits uh, crawl through this thing. And what it does is it just gives us a better um, uh, uh, a better feel for be, being in an SCBA and being in tight spaces right? and getting used to that feeling of, of being claustrophobic. Right, and what so, are some of the different challenges that you have throughout the course? So when we look at it from down here, it'll get tighter down here as you're crawling through and we can make it even, even tighter if we want to. Yeah. And then as you're coming through, you can go up and you can crawl, you can stay on the same level and you can crawl. And then when you look down here, this is an op obstacle course to get through uh, wires uh, for in case the ceiling comes down on you and you have wires on you and you still need to get out how to uh, manage those wires. Um, and it's a whole nother different world when you're in an SCBA doing it than if you're just not in an SCBA and, and just in plain clothes doing sure, it. Sure, sure. So, uh, yeah. uh, so, uh, yeah, so it's just the obstacle course to make us more competent working in an SCBA. Right. It really gets you to feel how large you become once you put the gear on. Because yeah. you're carrying around how much weight uh, extra that you Oh, I would have. say 40 pounds of weight. Of, of weight yep. and gear and all that kind of stuff. You got yep. your pockets full of your, your yep. equipment and you've got to yep. crawl through something like this in yep. these tight spaces. It's important to learn that and, yep. and understand where that is. Yep, and, that, and that's why we have uh, some diminished clearances, what we call over here, where it gets tighter, and then um, uh, uh, going through the wire maze right here. Now, this looks most difficult just, you know, doing it as is. Do you guys blindfold? We do, we do go blind, we do go through blindfolded too. Yeah. Um, and like you said, that makes it even more difficult and but more realistic because it could be we're in a smoky area where we can't see anything, right? And we're going through tight spaces, we're going through wires. Um, so yeah, it just uh, uh, makes us all better at the job. Right, because then that heightens your sight, or if you don't, you get rid of the sight. So your feel, your touch, your sound yep. really makes a big difference because you're bringing your tools, you're sounding the floor and stuff. Is that correct? Absolutely. Yeah, we're bringing our stuff, we're sounding the floor, and it, it just gives us some muscle memory. So when we're actually doing it under stress, if we have to, we can always, it's something we can, your, your brain can go back on. Okay, this is what we do when this happens. Right, this, right. this is how we get through tight spaces. So okay. um, it really helps out. Looking at, at that you know, wire mess over there, uh -huh. is it 
common or uncommon to maybe even get out of your SCBA to get through a tight hole? Sometimes you may have to. If it's that tight right. and you have to get out of your SCBA, we'll, we'll practice that. Okay. And uh, um, there's some tips and tricks that we use to get through that. And then, um, but it's nothing you want to think about when you actually have to do it, right? Right. So, um, like I said, um, it gives us good muscle memory on how to manage uh, diminished clearance in, in wires. And doing that blindfolded is pretty cool. Absolutely. Awesome. Yeah. All right. LT, cool. that was absolutely awesome. Hopefully you as viewers you know, understand just a little bit more of what these guys do on a training basis and the, the, the props that they have to do uh, at their station to, to stay fit, to stay educated on how to save you. Before we continue on, do us a favor, hit subscribe, hit notification, smash those like buttons, make a comment below. Do you guys have any kind of training facility like this at your place? We'd like to know. All right, where to next? Our right. apparatus and our uh, our other training awesome. stuff that we have. All right. All right. So this is where the so, tower was. This is where we came down to yep. uh, so this is, call. This is where we came down. Here's a map of our whole district okay. for the whole department. And it shows where all the stations are. This is all of South Metro. This is this all of South Metro right 32 here. territory. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we're going to get to what you have as far as apparatus in a little bit. I okay. know the big old scoreboard up here yeah. with some space. Can we yeah. go take a look at what's up there? Yep. Let's go look at it up here. So this is another uh, uh, training area that we have. And we'll use it for search. Um, we can use it for uh, what we call a vent inner search to um, go in through a window if we can't go in through uh, the front door and the stairway to get somebody. Okay. And we'll use that as the window right there. Right, okay. And you can throw yeah. ladders in here then too. We can throw ladders in here, yep, uh-huh. Right, you got your forcible entry uh, door. Yep, we got our forcible entry door. Um, we have some more SCBA um, competency uh, oh, props yeah. tunnels. Yeah. to put them through this. Space. Uh, Denver right Boy here. bailout, right? Yep. Okay. Denver bailout. So, and we can we have a ladder here too. So to put somebody through, uh, uh, just simulates putting somebody through a window, and then we're trying to get them out the window. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So. This is absolutely cool. Tell me the story about the scoreboard. Where did that come from? Do you know? Uh, it's when I don't know where we got it from. It, some firefighters uh, got it and put it up uh, when we opened the station. Is it functional? It does. It is functional though. Okay. Yeah, we just got to plug it in. All right. So maybe a little competi friendly, friendly yep. competition when you're doing your training. Yep. So in here too, we can also go over um, fire alarm systems. Okay. If we need to, and we deal with a lot of fire alarms, sprinkler systems. Right. right. Obviously in commercials and, and in mid rises. So we have it here at the station where we can go over all this stuff. With our with our new permission. And this kind of stuff players. can be very intimidating, especially for the rookies that come on board. They're like, yep. okay, where does all this go? How do the standpipes work? Yep. You know, which what alarm is going off in what box? What shut off do you use? Uh, right. The biggest thing, you know. Yeah. Uh, opening up the main drain. That's cool. Yeah. So we have that too. Yeah. So let's go upstairs. Obviously, we can. Uh, Put a ladder up to this window yep. right here. And we, we make and our way up. When we, when we get up to the top, let's see what it looks like up right. here. Even this staircase you can use for training. You know, we use the stair chairs. Absolutely. This stair chairs. To, to or even bringing, a, even bringing a, a firefighter in full bunker gear up and down. How are we going to do that? Right. Um, so now we'll come up here. And we kind of set it up. This is set up kind of as a, a, a living room or TV room. Okay, but it's not. This is training props. This is all training props. Okay. Yep, I so like the office divider. It was stuff that was kind of um, um, donated to us, but we can change with the office dividers, the configuration of the place. Right. And it can just be a room. Yeah, and we just come back here. Here's another room that we have. So this whole area up here can be set up differently, and we can configure it very easily just by just moving these walls. Cool. Last but not least, we're gonna go down to your bay. Okay. And you've got a couple of vehicles I'm gonna ask you about. You good yep, with that? Absolutely. All right. Yep. Yeah, this is your medic unit, right? All right, so this is our medic. This is Medic 32. Uh, it's a 2022 E450. Yep. And it's uh, made by AEV. Yeah. And they're it's a pretty, trauma hawk. Yeah, yeah, they're pretty popular. We love these trucks. Yep. Uh, the E450 front end usually has like a V10 in it. It runs really, really nice. 
Now yeah. this, you, you said you were doing about 90% medical calls. Yeah. This truck stays pretty busy. It does, it stays very busy. It's the, it's the busiest uh, rig we have at this station. Do you run Medic Medic or do you run Medic EMT? We run Medic Medic. Medic Medic, yep. that's nice. So a lot of times, yeah, they'll swap calls. So uh, they're doing 50% uh, of the calls each each, each paramedic. Okay, so, yep. and the tower that I rode in, what, what do you got over yep. here? So the tower is a 2017 Pierce Velocity. Uh, Mid-mount tower, 100 foot ladder. Okay. Uh, the pump is rated at 1500, and uh, it has a uh, 300 gallon water tank. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Is this considered a quint then, because it has water on it, or you don't have the whole complement of ladders? Uh, we do have the whole complement of ladders. Okay. So it, it could be considered a, a quint. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The, the velocity that these guys have been making has been very popular as we go across the channel for. Uh, here is next door we've done a couple of them some of them have done the clean cab concept some of them not but the velocity uh, uh cab has been yeah. very very popular yeah uh and I, I love the cab it's roomy um it, it, it has room to put your gear in it and, and, and all that yeah. right right so. it was a comfortable ride too yeah you, know? you got another vehicle over here too yep. this is your battalion chief and this is our battalion chief vehicle and this is a f-150 uh, 2020 F-150. Okay. And this is our command vehicle. Okay. Um, he usually takes command and runs the call when he gets on scene, and he has a board that's sitting in his passenger seat that he puts on his steering wheel and uh, uh, runs the call like that. Right, so he's yeah. got his radios next to yep. him, maybe uh -huh. even has a scribe in the, in the second seat? He does seat? have a scribe, which, w which would be Med 2, which is the Med Battalion once they get there. Okay. They'll get in uh, this seat and, and help him out in managing the call. And sometimes when he's second on scene, the battalion that's second on scene, uh, they'll put uh, gear on, fire gear, SCBA and everything. Okay. And they'll go, go inside with us and make sure that everything's being run properly. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, LT, I thank you so much for bringing us around. This is an absolutely yeah. beautiful house. Uh, well, I a, thank you for coming. It was a and pleasure coming meeting and visit. you, learning yep. everything that's going on, going on a yeah. ride with you. Yeah. So we really appreciate you. Yeah. So as we end our program here for another Station Cribs, do us a favor, hit subscribe, hit notification, smash those like buttons. It really helps our algorithm. Make some comments below, but also go to South Metro Fire Rescue uh, on YouTube also. Eric does a fantastic job. He's the PIO that runs that. Uh, I can't thank him enough for inviting us out. So. Thank you all for watching and we'll see you again next week. And thanks for visiting our crib.